Hey there, friends. Happy Friday to you. I hope you are having a terrific Friday. I've got two journals, Big Mama journals, to go in the shop today. I wanted to show those to you. This is one of my very um, favorite things to do is to like sit here and talk about these books and ways to use them. And I just thank all of you so much for watching me on YouTube, for supporting me at Patreon, and for supporting the Etsy store. Thank you guys so much. Let's take a look at these journals. Like I said, they are Big Mama journals. Again, I am working with what I I have on hand. Um, our birdie journal is about five and a quarter and our lovely flower journal is five inches thick. So let's take a look at little birdie first. This is favorite fabric. I'm very grateful to Miss C for sending me uh, so much fabric to work with. And this has always been like one of our favorites, y'all. It, it has all those things that we love. You know, it has birds. It has butterflies. It has scrappy bits on it. Sheet music, you know, flowers, just stamps, the whole thing. Um, the spine on this journal I did with some new beads that were sent to be by, um, I think Miss Elsa sent those. Um, might have been Miss C, might have been Miss J. I can't exactly remember, but I am just really grateful to have some. Aren't they pretty? They've just got these super pretty uh, glittery, uh, not glittery, but shiny pastel colors. Very, very, very pretty. So let's talk about a flow journal, friends. What is a flow journal? Man, oh man, you can use it to warm up in the morning. You can use it to cool down in the afternoon. I'm doing yoga right now, and for me, yoga is a transitional time. So I I know that a lot of us are working from home now and we might need ways to transition from our working at home you know typically if you worked in an office you would have that drive home or that commute home to kind of reset or transition yourself into a different headspace. Now, with so many of us working from home, we may find ourselves kind of um, ungrounded, you know, because we're working, cooking, cleaning, teaching our children, taking care of our space in the very same home that all of us share. So journals were, you know, journals and writing just do wonders to transition you from one space, you know, kind of space time into a different space time. So, you know, just wonderful ways to um, to transition. Also wonderful ways to warm up in the morning, to cool down in the evening. This is a great little bed book, you guys, because all you need is a glue stick and some scissors. You can get creating in seconds flat. And, you know, it's, it's sweet to be able to take a book like this into the bed with you and be able to not pick up that telephone and get engaged in whatever is going on in the world. You know, we can call this a disengagement journal because basically that is what it is. You're disengaging from the world. You're going into your own little space, into your own um into your own environment, you're creating, you're in that creative spirit. These books have four signatures and they have eight pockets. I am, like I said, creating with what I have on hand. So they have all kinds of uh, crazy objects in it, things that I've made. I spend a lot of time making things to go into these journals. So whether it's, you know, cutting or you guys know how fond I am of curation. Uh, I'm doing a lot of painting now, and those elements are incorporated into the journals. I'm really trying hard to not buy paper pads, and that is um, 
that's uh, <laughs> that means that I'm creating, folding, making like a lot of stuff. This is one of my painted pieces, and I really do. I, I'm just digging the paint right now. And typically, I wouldn't think of myself as a painty person, but you know, I'm turning into a painty person. But I can't mm, paint. Uh, things you know so it's just like uh it's abstract and it's collagey and it's you know colorful and it has texture to it and just all the things that that I really really love the things that you'll find in your journal are prompts you'll find focal images words you'll find symbols you may find little snippets of poetry or quotes um, you may find letters, and I mean like ABC letters, uh, dates, numbers. There may be a, a calendar portion in here for you to play with because every single journal is different. I can't say, oh, there's calendar in here because I don't know if there is or not. Really cool maps, different styles and kinds of paper to play with. This is so cool. This is a 1971 Vega repair manual. And a sweet guy down the street had it, and he was like, I think that your guy would like this. Now, Chris works on uh, Nissan Z cars. So it was really interesting to... Uh, to to see the z car materials that our friend mark bought by too but you know i snagged that vega book i was like oh my lord vintage <laughs> 70s vintage yes i'll be having some of that um this is a really cool pass it around book so i know that we're we're still staying at home, and we just may get to the point where, you know, there's just not a lot to do. This is a great, you know, we may have gone through all of our puzzles and all of our crafty things. Um, this is a great book to put on a table and go, okay, we're each going to choose five things to work with from this book. And, you know, see what everybody comes up with. And then engage people to talk about it. You know, all you're going to need, like I said, is glue sticks and scissors. And then, you know, if you want to do markers or pencils or pens or paint or whatever, then that's kind of totally up to you my dear friends totally up to you stamping is always really effective on these text pages uh you've got napkins for collage you've got advertising uh this is some origami paper so you'll get a lot of ideas just by flipping through the book you know texture elements um this is seashells you know when was the last time you went to the seashore so when your eyes fall on something you can write about it i, I think sometimes we tend to think that when we journal or when we write that we have to be really specific for me that's not the case you know everybody has to find their own way but i think if you can just journal a sentence or just journal a word then and use a prompt to evoke a memory you know evoke a dream or evoke a, you know something that has happened to you um I think that those kinds of writing are just as effective of, you know, as like a hardcore type journaling uh, kind of book. So again, we've got these gorgeous pastel beads on the spine of this book. Now, this book has a really big spine. Let me see. Um, the one that I just showed you, you guys, is two and three quarters. This one is two and three quarters as well. So, you know, you do have that big, big bead spawn. Um, I just think this fabric is so old fashioned, very quaint, very vintagey feeling, you know. Um, I love to use the abandoned. I love, and now talk about abandoned. This pocket paper that I used was from my friend Lorraine and it had been in her studio for about 20 years so 
you know, that is super vintage and I love things that have, um, I love things that are lost. I love things that are abandoned. You guys know that, you know, give me your orphan, give me <laughs> rejects, give me your trash, you know, odd stuff, misfits, uh, scraps, homeless, you know, if something's derelict or hasn't been used in years, then, you know, yeah, it's got my name written all over it. And the cool thing is, is that when, um, when I put these books together, I, I really have that sense that I'm giving things some new life, you know, maybe some new energy. So I'm giving it some new energy and then you give it your new energy as well. So you have all kinds of, of good, uh, positive flow that happens in these books. It's just a lot of fun to work with them. Look at this old skateboard guy in his old skateboard shop. Mm, that really evokes a memory because my kids were into skateboarding. They loved to skateboard. And both were just really, really quite good. Again, we have a little bit of shell ephemera. You guys, these are tea bags. We're, we're fond of tea here, especially Chris. Chris drinks a lot of tea. And these are the bags that, these are my tea bags. I let them dry. I rip the seam out of them. And then I fold them out and they become paper for these books. So I am hardcore into recycling. Uh, you know, it's, it's recycling things that are old or you know, forgotten or torn. I love stuff that's torn. Uh, things that are used. 2020 calendar. We're all done with that. Thank goodness. Uh, painting papers. <clears throat> and, you know, don't discount all of your hairy paper clips, your fibers, your fabric, art trading card blanks, art trading coin blanks, sketches. Um, I knocked together some some collage for you guys because I think that collage is very, very interesting. My uncle was a big collage guy. Um, this is the the wrapping paper that I picked up at Michael's several weeks ago. I love the botanical fern uh, pine cone nature of these things. Again, some fabric for you to work with. These are my dryer sheets from my dryer that are used, and then I kind of press them and, you know, kind of flatten them and make them, uh, again, into something that has a different life. I'm reading an article about the, end, it's called The End of Trash. It's really interesting, you guys, to think about how, especially clothing, we buy a lot of cheap clothing, and we don't wear it very long, and we don't wear it very long because it doesn't last very long, because it's not very well made, because it's cheap clothing, but how that clothing clutters up you know, our landfills and recycling, it was, it's just an amazing read. And I'll be talking probably more about that on my, on my uh, Patreon site where I'm doing a weekly podcast now on Fridays, which um, I've got that on my schedule to get done today. My Patreon peeps that are out there listening. Yes, we're going to do a podcast today. I started out in broadcasting. I was going to broadcasting school my senior year in high school, believe it or not. And um, by that time, I had finished all my classes, so I was not really even going to school. So I thought, well, I'm not graduating yet, so why not do something different? So I went to broadcasting school, and that was really kind of a start of my... Um, probably professional career, because then I, uh, when I got out of high school, I worked for a radio station called WRPL, and they were a progressive rock station. Lots of fun to, uh, to get that experience so very, very, very early in my life. Here we see some derelict items that were left from Halloween. <laughs> Love it. Um, wanted to thank all of you ladies who are sending me things in the mail, 
uh, from your de-stashing of your studios. Thank you guys so much. Just really means a lot to to get something in the mail. And isn't mail delightful? <laughs> you know, we're not going anywhere. So isn't it a sweet thing to get a card or or just a little uh, note in the mail that says, um, hi, thinking of you. My friend Jackie wrote us a wonderful poem. And um, I'll be sharing that again on my uh, Patreon podcast a little bit later this month. It's just really sweet to you know, for someone to take time out and, and send you a little note or a little Circe, you know, a little gift. It's a marvelous thing. Circe is very Southern. Um, I learned that a couple weeks ago. We have calendar images in here. I, I did some stamping on vintage text pages. That's really fun. So there we go, my friends. Two new journals to go into the shop today. I should get these photographed and listed in the shop sometime this afternoon. I hope that all of you have a delightful Friday. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend. Stay warm out there. I know that uh, we're expecting some uh, really chilly weather here, and I know that lots of you are going to experience that chilly weather as well. Take care, my friends. I will talk to you soon. Bye.